I love this term, neuroosseous. So let's look at some of the neuroosseous relationships uh, that might be influencing progression in scoliosis. This is a really a fascinating article. It's by Patel, and the title is The New Field of Neuroskeletal Biology. And here I took a quote from, from the uh, abstract. The fields of neuroscience and bone biology have recently converged following the discovery that bone remodeling is directly re regulated by the brain. This, to me, was shocking. I did not know this. I was talking to uh, one of my friends uh, last night. I said, did you know that bone is a target tissue of the nervous system? He said, yeah, of course I knew that. I said, I did not really know that. But then when you look at what we know about neurological imbalances, what we know about reflex sympathetic dystrophy or Marie Charcot tooth disease or changes in bone after TBI, yeah, you know what, we kind of do know that the brain influences bone formation. I always thought it was hormonal, right? Hormonal, that makes sense. Estrogen, women that lose estrogen during menopause lose bone density. So that made sense, hormonal. But then if you go, well, where do hormones come from? Well, they come from maybe the hypothalamus, okay? So where's the hypothalamus? Well, it's in the lower brain. So, okay, it is related to brain. So in my training and education, it was never related to scoliosis in any circle I've ever been in. I'm one of the founding members of a group called SOSORT, the Society of Scoliosis Rehabilitation and, uh, and Therapy. Not once did anyone ever talk about the brain creating asymmetrical bone growth, but here this article does. And so from the ventromedial medial hypothalamus via the sympathetic nervous system, influenced by a hormone called leptin, we can end up with activation, deactivation of osteoblast, osteoclast, and osteocytes. So there's a direct link from brain to bone that we need to talk about. This is from Iowa Orthopedic Journal. Bone is a target tissue of the nervous system. New advances in the understanding and their interactions. This blew my mind. And really, when Rob asked me to speak, I said, I got, I got it all together. I'm ready, Rob. Put me up there. I can't wait to share this stuff. Okay, so there are neuroskeletal pathways. There are neuropeptides and neurotrophins and nerve growth factors and uh, cerebral hypothalamic pathways and, and neurohormonal influences all affecting bone growth. So if we have a patient who's 12 years old who has amenorrhea, how many of you have scoliosis patients in, in your practice? Okay. Do they typically have normal menstrual cycles? No. Not at 12 years old. They don't menstruate. They have amenorrhea. They have low body mass. They've got low fat content. They're usually tall and slender. Okay, they have hormonal issues. Well, now that we put this in the proper light, can those hormonal issues contribute to the asymmetry of the bone that's, that's happening during that major growth spurt? Yeah, this is what's really, really exciting.